Welcome back, investors, to Ticker Time News. I'm Adam, and the S&P 500 rose 0.8% on Monday as money flowed back into mega cap growth stocks, which accounted for the outperformance in the NASDAQ up 1.9%. The Dow Jones was up 0.3% and the Russell 2000 up 0.2%. Now, growth stocks appear to be drawing some speculative interest from Elon Musk disclosing a, and we'll get to that in just a moment. First, Look at the chart for the S&P 500. We are in a bit of an area here, right? We're right up butting against resistance at about 4580 to 4590, that zone in there. We have volume declining. We have RSI declining. And then we have money flows at an elevated state just staying flat up there, right? Money flows right now are at a 72.8. What we need... And let me first say that my thesis for the S&P 500 is still intact. I do believe we are going to all-time highs. And to get there, we need to get to 48.19. 48.19 on the S&P 500. 48.19, that would be a new all-time high. I do believe we're going there. Now, we could not keep up this insane rally that we had all through March, the second half of March. Um, that was just too strong. It was too potent. We got our snapback rally to the area where I can. I figured that we would back to the crossover point of the death cross, but then we just needed to cool off a bit. And that's what we need to do right now. We need to cool off a little bit, allow the money flows to come down. And I'll give you the perfect example. If we go back here to this all-time high that was hit back at the beginning of November of 2021, right? If we look at RSI, it was overextended. It was way up there. And if we look at money flows, they were more extended than they are right now. Okay. And once we hit that all time high, money flows stayed flat. RSI started to come down. And what we needed was a pullback before we could start rallying again. Well, we've kind of got that same pullback over um, November, I'm sorry, over March the 30th and 31st just like we did on November the 9th and November the 10th. But then we had a little bit of a rally, right? But then we needed this pullback, this big pullback right here where there was a lot of messiness, right? In the S&P 500, there were big green days, big red days. It was just a mess. And the reason we needed this pullback, this is a healthy pullback, even though it was wild, is because we needed the relative strength to come down we needed money flows to come down. So that way, the next time we went for all time highs again, we had enough momentum built up so we could get to these new all time highs right here. So that's what we need to happen right now. Now that can happen in two different ways, right? We can either get above this resistance area here and maybe get somewhere in here, 4,600, 4,700, maybe as high as, and then we just need a healthy pullback, not a correction like we saw from January to the middle of March of this year, but a healthy pullback. Or we can just go ahead and have the healthy pullback now, which would probably come down to the area where this purple line is here at 4470, give or take in that range. But a healthy pullback is what we need to get RSI to come down to get the money flows, which are overextended to come down. So we have the momentum to get to new all time highs. So that's what I'm seeing with the S and P 500 there, a quick technical uh, breakdown uh, of what I'm seeing in the two scenarios. I think we have in the path that we're on. All right, back to Elon Musk. He disclosed a 9.2% passive stake in a social media company, Twitter ticker symbol T W T R. Now, Elon Musk propelled Twitter's stock to a 27% gain. This was the biggest one day gain in company history. Incredible. Now the investment by Elon Musk is, we don't know exactly, right? We don't know what his goal is, but we have maybe an understanding that it might have to do with our first amendment rights and free speech. Because remember, Elon Musk posted a poll on Twitter asking about whether Twitter was doing a good job of protecting free speech. And the majority, 70, maybe some percent, uh, said no. 
Twitter was not. So Elon Musk had a couple of choices to make. And remember in business, you, you want to try to take the path of least resistance, right? Cause that's going to cost you less time and it's going to cost you less money. So you can either build something from scratch or you can uh, take control of something that's already on the market. Well, what's the path of least resistance building a social media network from scratch or taking a controlling size of Twitter? Well, taking a controlling size of Twitter so you can kind of shape it into what you or what your vision is for the company and for free speech. So that's something that Elon Musk is potentially doing there. Now the investment and the bullish reaction, 27% for Twitter, man, it seemed to install confidence in dip buying activity in growth stocks, right? Including mega cap growth. Now the Vanguard mega cap growth ETF, which ticker symbol is M G K. And again, this is the Vanguard mega cap growth ETF. It advanced 1.9% today, leaving the Invesco S and P 500 equal weight ETF ticker symbol is R S P. And again, S and P 500 equal weight ETF in the dust with its 0.2% gain. So we definitely see big cap growth was stealing the show today. Now the S and P 500 information technology sector, which was up 1.9% consumer discretionary and communication services, both up uh, 2.3%. Those are the three sectors that contain the mega cap growth stocks in them. Now, the energy sector, it eked out a 10th of a percent gain while the other sectors closed lower with utilities dropping the furthest, meaning the defensive stance was thrown out the window. That narrative was gone. People were jumping on growth, right? Uh, utilities dropped 0.8% and finished in last place out of the 11 S and P 500 sectors. Um, oh, one more note or one more thought here on Elon Musk. We got to talk about Tesla. T S L A is the ticker symbol. Now Tesla reported over 310,000 deliveries in the first quarter representing get this a 68% year over year increase despite ongoing supply chain disruptions that other automakers are facing. Tesla seems to be doing really well at overcoming those obstacles. Now, Tesla shares, they rose, what was it? 5.6, 5.61% today uh, in a good round of applause for Elon Musk and company at Tesla for a record breaking uh, number of deliveries. Okay. AMD made news today, ticker symbol AMD advanced micro devices. They were in the news today because they announced a definitive agreement to acquire pin Sando. Am I saying that right? For about $1.9 billion as part of AMD's strategy to bolster its data center presence. So, we're working on a video right now to break down this move. So you have the latest details about AMD, what they're planning, what they're doing here. And that video will be out later this week. Now, Starbucks was in the news for a split reason today. S B U X is the ticker symbol for Starbucks. Now Starbucks fell 3.72% flatten after hours. Why? Because the interim CEO, Howard Schultz, suspended the company's share buyback program. So a share buyback program is when a company buys its own shares and whenever shares are being bought, that helps a stock's price to appreciate or go up over time, right? Because when people are buying shares left and right, a stock skyrocks. When people are selling those shares, then the stock sinks and drops off. So a share buyback program is just another way for a company to reward investors similar to a dividend, except a dividend is a cash payment to the investor, right? A certain percentage for each share that you hold. A buyback program is rewarding, you know, investors potentially. There are times when buyback, uh, share buyback programs 
uh, don't help a company because there's so much selling pressure that even though they may be buying back millions and millions of dollars worth of their own shares, it doesn't help to appreciate their shares. So it's not as direct as a dividend, but it is another form of rewarding investors. Now, the reason CEO of Starbucks gave for stopping, putting an end to share buybacks right now is to invest more in the company's people and stores. This move can be viewed as both a positive one and a negative one. Investing in your company through its people and your locations or, or service or, or whatever it is that you do can pay dividends in the future. And of course, the negative is that the company is taking share buybacks to make this investment happen. So some shareholders selling, obviously, Starbucks today viewed this as a negative one. Others thought it was a positive. Good for you, Starbucks, for investing in your company and your people, because that's what makes you profitable to begin with, right? Having good people, having a good company. Now, elsewhere in the market, oil prices climbed back above $100 per barrel, actually $103 a barrel. It was up 3.8%. Uh, and amid no reported progress in peace talks between Russia and Ukraine. Also, coal, coal prices hit a 13-year high, exacerbating the inflation narrative that helped drive selling interest in the longer dated part of the treasury market, which is the 10-year yield. That increased by three basis points to 2.41%, while the two-year yield decreased one basis point to 2.42%, narrowing the inversion to one basis point. So right now, the 10-2 yield is still inverted upside down. We're in the upside down place. We need to get out of it by one basis point. So not a whole lot of a spread there, but we're still inverted. What will tomorrow bring? Now, on the economic data front, factory orders for manufactured goods declined a half a percent month over month in February. It followed a relatively strong month of order growth in January and likely reflects some delayed influence of the Omicron variant on business activity, making it too early to say whether this is the start of a weakening trend for factory orders, which I believe, mm, I think we're leaning towards especially over the next several months. Okay, if you could, this would be really helpful. Smash that like button, share this video, and join us in beating the market by clicking the first link in the description. And if it's your first time watching, click subscribe. For Ticker Time News, I'm Adam. Thank you so very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.